he's like, yeah, um, I think I'm going to come in like, I can't come unless you kiss me. <laughs> and then, and me and like everybody else. He said it like that or he was like saying it? Yeah, he's like, but he was like, he was like, uh, I can't come unless you kiss me. Uh, like, he was saying it like on some, I thought he was joking. Like, I literally right. thought like, like, I was like, there's no way he's going to say that. And like, everyone was just like in the room, like, ah, uh, like. And he like went off. out of his room and then he like came back in and he put on the headphones and he actually said it and I was like, this guy is my dude. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the third episode of Car and Conversations. I'm your host, JB. And I'm your other host, Globe Jake. So today, special guest as usual, kind of a funny story. Um, we tried to do this interview before a few weeks ago. Uh, had some technical difficulties. We we're a Zoom rookie, so it didn't really work out. But uh, he's gracious enough to come back, spend some more time with us, do the interview again. So back again for the first time. Everybody give it up for the Kid Leroy. How's life been for you? Oh, it's been pretty fucking, it's been pretty crazy, I guess. I got a whole bunch of shit coming up. I'm, uh, I've been walking on this fucking little, like, I don't know, it's like a little surprise I got for fans and shit that I, I got coming that I've just been working on for like literally the past two days. I'm about to go back to the studio right after this and um, finish it. Can, what's the surprise? Can we, get a, can we get a sneak preview of the surprise? It's, it's like some music, but it's like, I don't know. It's like, it's like not a single and it's not an album. Okay. So do the math, okay, y'all. Okay. You know? right. So do the fucking math. <laughs> yeah, A plus B equals C. But um, but but yeah. So I got got a little something coming. I should be out in October, uh, which is gonna be fucking sick. And then I got a few other little things that I'm just fucking filming. Like actually, for for the next like fucking week, I've got a pretty fucking fucked week. <laughs> got a tight schedule. Like, seen a lot of I've seen a lot of fucking like music videos and shit and fucking just little extra other shit like it's a good problem to have though staying busy you know especially yeah i know i know i feel like i feel like even since just even just since the last time we tried to do this interview you've done a ton of stuff the wrong video came out the internet uh, money project came out you were all over that um the wrong video was super dope how did that come together what was the concept behind that we were gonna have steve shoot it originally i Mm -hmm. think steve cannon and then Yeah, and then I think what happened was uh, we, we, yeah, so we had met um, Logan, who directed the video, uh, and we had met him, and we were chopping it up with him, and I think we just, like, sent him some some music or, like, some shit, or, like, he checked something out, and then, you know, obviously, we'd be like, oh, I don't know, it'd be fucking, I don't know, it'd be cool to have him fucking direct (laughs) the video, just because, like, I don't know, it'd just be on some, it'd be some funny, like, cool shit, because, like, the whole it's kind of like a playful song. It's kind of like just like no giving a fuck type shit. So it's just, I don't know, the video, I just thought like someone like him could be perfect to, to make that, you know, he knows the vibe. Yeah. come to life. They get drunk, get fucked like, up. He, 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 yeah, like, you know, he, he knows about being young and getting fucked up and doing a whole bunch of fucking LA shit. So, <laughs> so I was like, I was like, yeah, I mean, he, he could be fucking sick to direct the video. And, and you know, I, you know, to be honest with you, I wasn't, a big Logan Pulse fan before I, nice. I met him, and then and, and you know, and then I met him, and he's actually like he's actually a really nice and, and, and cool dude. So it's always fucking good to, yeah. So I was like, uh, yeah, I was I was like surprised. I was like, holy shit, this guy's fucking this guy's cool. So I fucking um, yeah. So I sent him, we sent him that, and then we were like, shit, would you be down to do it? Because you know he doesn't like directed anybody's music videos. I don't think. I don't, I don't think sure. so either. I, I don't think he has it. So that was fucking cool. Uh, he was like, yeah, he's like, I'll be down. So then. So it kind of happened like super he, organically, like just kind of. Oh, yeah, no, no, 100%. And then he like, he uh, he sent the treatment over and I was like, oh, yeah, this is perfect for <laughs> what I see song doing. Because I, I don't know. I, we, I don't know. Hey. I just fucking, I, I knew that he would, he would be able to come up he with He brought Lana stuff. Rhodes, I'm guessing, because I know that's like his. Right, yeah, that was all his idea too. That was all his idea. So that's <laughs> all credit to him. A lot of I cool people. Like, and and you know what's crazy when I, even like even when I, because you know I like I said I wasn't, I I just wasn't necessarily like familiar with a lot of the with a lot of his stuff. I you know heard, you know, obviously like 
you heard some shit or whatever, mm-hmm. but I never actually really checked out his stuff like that. So um, I was kind of like, shit, I hope, like, because I know he hasn't directed anybody's new year. So I was like, fuck, I hope he can, like, do this shit. Do it. Yeah, and then he pulled it off, and I was like, holy shit. <laughs> he pulled it off. Oh, uh, yeah. For you guys sure. had uh, TJ, yeah, no, TJ in the video? I, yeah, 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 we had TJ come through. He, he actually just pulled up to the video shoot, and then Fire. he was like, fuck you want to get in those are how the best yeah. scenes work though remember the the blueberry fago video you just pulled up just to chill and then <laughs> oh yeah 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 literally so literally some some shit like that it was also shit like that yeah that's amazing so, that's um, dope so yeah the, but yeah the wrong video came out fire and it and it actually like is going up going on, up, on my youtube oh. right now so it's, it's fucking so yeah, yeah. go um, check it out if you haven't seen it yeah so yeah shout out to logan for directing that shit too he, he killed it Facts. I think it's dope that there's just kind of this new wave culture right now where, like, you can just pull up to, you know, the homies music video, you know, hop in a cameo real quick. Like, I feel like it didn't always used to be, like, that type of camaraderie. We, we actually just had Golden um, in the studio or in the interview room yesterday. Um, he was saying that you guys, like, linked up in the studio before. Uh, yeah, you know what's great? Well, that's, that's my boy. We, we hang out all the time, and we do have a few stuff. We, we have a few songs in the in the vault uh but i would i would definitely like we definitely got to work some more together for sure because uh we, we're always hanging out but we like we some like i don't know we, we just haven't gone in in like that but yeah we definitely do have a couple fire fire shits in the in the vault yeah he's y'all. like he's like dennis rodman on the court <laughs> for he's real we, we hooped energy. yesterday for real bro yeah, he no, hooped like seven months. games with us yeah yeah no he was going crazy while we're on the <laughs> subject of basketball Leroy. What is this I see uh, you having your own team in this crew league tournament for 100 racks? What's that about? I see you with Bronny. Yeah, uh, look, all I'm going to say is <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not giving out any details about who's on my team because oh, man. I can't kind of let the opposition know what my plan is. But yep. all I'm saying is <laughs> I'm $100,000 rich after this event. Okay. That's what I'm saying. I love it. I love, love the, the confidence. confidence. We're a little offended that we didn't get invite to have, to to have to put a squad together. You know, like, well, I think you, know. you guys were afraid. I mean, to... I mean yeah, you I, <laughs> you guys suck. That's why <laughs> you guys you guys are so bad. I like literally the only person that's like I I feel like that I've seen from you guys like Jake. He's he's cool. Jake's cool. Jake's got a nice hey, little jumper. Is, when, when I was on the grade bro. A court. We shut it down. Me, me, Herb, and Ben Gomez shut the whole tournament down. We we swept the yeah, tournament. He claims it was an eleven zero, eleven zero. Huh? You weren't there, man. <laughs> it was like the first day, low key, when yeah, TJ. That's right. I yeah, that's right. If if that happened, I wasn't there. Because if I was there, it wouldn't happen. <laughs> I will say the Australian assassin. You you got the hoops down. You've gotten a lot better see, though. See, see, see. This is something about this is something about me. Like you. See, you would see a video of me playing basketball and you would be like, he's weak as fuck. But it's like different. It's like, have you ever heard that Drake line when he talks about a taller in person you see when we meet? Like, mm. it's like one of those things like you have to play me in person to really get the gist like, oh shit, he's actually good. Like, right. oh, yeah. I don't know. It's like, I, 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 my form's a little off and my shit looks a little funny, but I get the job done. So he's taking it to the make up for it with effort. Back on the music topic, you just dropped the project. Fuck love, personally, yeah. I love it. Why fuck love? I don't know. It's it's weird because like it it started like I never went into the project going like okay I'm gonna make like a project and it's gonna be about this and it's gonna be like, like I don't a know, concept I, I never, album. Yeah, I, yeah, like never went into it like that. It was kind of like I was just making so many songs in this little period of time that was about like some shit that I was going through with some with some girls and like <laughs> like those like maybe three or four songs that I was like, oh shit, like this is like like sounds these like are something these are together. Really good. Yeah, it sounds like something together. And I remember me and Bibby had sat down and we were like, fuck, like this is this could be really good. And then because we, we were originally just gonna put out like an EP and like on some just like but like we we, we didn't we didn't really want to do that. We wanted to do something that was like more I guess meaningful and something that's more like more that the fans can grab onto and be like, oh, you know, we we like this as opposed to just a compilation of like six songs and just like it's just like out listen there to and it's it like, and cool. 
Yeah, yeah like we want people to listen to it. So then I go Make back in the studio. Yeah, so I got back in the studio after having those those songs, and that's how I kind of built the project was around those like three or four, five songs. You see what I'm saying? And then I I filled in the blanks and shit like that. Um, what were the first few songs that like set the blueprint? Go was one of them. I think it was maybe was mm. one of them. Oh, not not fair mm. with Corbin. Tell me why. Oh, uh, and erase you. Those were like the songs that I like. I had already, and I was like, damn, this shit. All, it all sounds like it's about the same thing because it really was. It was like all really about the same, same type of shit. Mm. I mean, oh, obviously, uh. I mean, but, but yeah, but I mean that. Then that's like obviously like tell me why, which is not even about any girls or whatever but it's like it could be you know what i'm saying it could fit in that same even it's the same it's not, tone like yeah like you like people could relate it to somebody dying people could relate it to to you know a girl even then people could relate i feel like people could relate that song to a few other things so i was just like damn this shit all sounds like together and uh and uh yeah so that's how we kind of just went from there and 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 built that out and i was just making more songs but like going in and like making more songs like i realized like all right i'm like walking towards like a project now so yeah but yeah it, it just started with like four or five songs and just like a whole bunch of like teenager shit <laughs> that's good <laughs> Turned i mean we've all been through that i mean the thought process shows definitely in the music like just the cohesiveness like you said and i mean even just like being so aware of that at such a you know early stage in your career and um, yeah. You know, being aware that it matters, like the cohesiveness, the you know one one sound, especially it being your debut project, even like including the skits on there to kind of tie it all together and tell a story. Um, I know last time we talked, you mentioned that those were like from real life experiences. Everybody already knows because I said this, I posted about it. But the first skit on the project is a real is a real call. So yeah. now, what happened was that was the call. I was on the phone to this girl and we were talking, we were having a conversation and my homie Han was in the room. So I thought it was fucking funny if I put her on speaker. And like, <laughs> I, was, I was like, I was laughing at this shit and Han thought this shit was funny. So he pulled out his phone. Oh shit. And, and his voice notes had just started. So shout out to Han because he really like, he, 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 just, he just knew that shit. I don't know. It's like, he just started pulling out and just recording that. And, and that's also actually how the project kind of kicked off too was from that skit like that Damn. was really so we had those songs but matter of fact now now it's coming back. so once we had recorded that conversation because the whole conversation is like a five minute conversation we just took the best part and just made it like and then built like the voicemail shit around it but that's like a real girl <laughs> who's really bad and really right. sad like you know what I mean? but yeah so after we recorded that and we had that we like oh shit this needs to be the the first skit on the on on the on the mixtape, and then we're just like, yeah, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna make the tape, and that's gonna be about this. So the recording was like part of the foundation too, in a way. Yeah. So then, like, I had to when I had all the songs on the project ready. Uh, well, most of them. There was only one song that I didn't have, which was wrong. Mm. <laughs> Funny enough, Patreon <laughs> Mosey, which I actually added to the project. Uh, two days before it came, before the project came out. My label was very mad at me about, uh, because I had already turned the project in like two weeks. And then I was like, you guys have to add this song. Cause like. Is that a big problem? A like, is that, is, is there, is there a lot of hoops to jump through with that? I mean, it's just like so last minute, but shout out to them though. They, they let me rock out and they let me put it. I know probably a lot of, I know probably a lot of people would probably like, be like, no, it's turned in, but like they let me rock out. So shout out to them. Um, hey, shout out the label. Uh, well, after I had all the songs, well, I thought I had all the songs. I had to call her and break it down to her, like, yo, because you know, obviously, I had to get her permission to right. use the skit of the project, or otherwise, I probably might have could have got sued. <laughs> but I was like, um, hey, like, in the nicest you know, way possible. Tell I had you on speaker. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of, I told like a little white lie, like. Uh, you know, like a very small lie. I was like, I was on. Right, even explaining I was that. <laughs> yeah, I said, I said that I, I said I had you on speaker because I was eating. Mm, okay. And Han and Han walked in the room and heard it and thought it was funny and recorded it. And of course, you didn't uh, know. Like, 
Yeah, I had no idea it was recording at the time. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, of course. I was like, I had no idea. I was like, I would, uh, so can I use it? Because it fits really perfectly on my project. And and the way I cut it, I was like, and you can actually record like two or three more skits for me if like, if you oh, know, like, you know, like you can record like some more, like some stage ones, you know, to make it like fit with the project. And she was super cool about that. And she was like, yeah. Um, Yo, yeah, she's I'm she's a legend because like, those skits. I know, right? Shout out to her. She's a she's she's legend for that. It's probably a cool experience for her too, in a way. At first, she was like, "What?" Like, what <laughs> yeah. Are you about? And then I was like, "Look, like, <laughs> we're gonna do this either way." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was literally because I was like, it took me. I can't lie. It took me like a good two weeks to like man up and do that call like it literally like literally because i wasn't talking to this girl anymore like we left off on a bad note and i was just like how am i i was literally i remember being at like the shopping center with han and think and literally asking him like bro how am i gonna like do this oh it's a tough conversation yeah for sure like how the fuck do i do that and i just didn't know the right way because i didn't want to do it and she'd be like no and then i have to like I don't know, do some crazy shit and just <laughs> use it anyway. Cause like, I literally needed that. Like I'm 17 now, but I was 16 at the time. And I was like, people are gonna like, what the fuck is a 16 year old making a fucking project called fuck love? Like that, that shit sounds so fake. Like how, like, you see what I'm saying? Like people would just, I knew people would probably like see that or like hear and be like, like think it's cliche or something. Like, 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 well, like, what the fuck does this kid know about love? He's 16. Like, why is he? So I, I needed that skit to really prove and show like, no, this is really what I'm going through. This is really what's, what's happening. So right. I, I needed that skit so I, I it could validate it and I could always be like, no, this is literally what, you see what I'm saying? So it definitely adds to the project a lot for sure. Yeah, I was like, I, I was just thinking of ways I could just do that. But shout out to her because she was super cool about it. So, yeah, no, oh, she yeah, really like structured the project in a way because it's like the first skit is like, hey, we're a little rough. The second one's like, it's getting worse. The third one's like, all right, you know, like it, it's yeah, over. Yeah. Like, the Leroy's the worst. I saw the towels. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew those were your towels. Like, it, it's just a cool thing how it, how it all came about. It's all- the shit is all, all, even the ones that are like staged, this gets, they're like all based off real shit too. Oh, I'm, it sounded like those were coming from the heart from her. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, she, she, she's a good, good voice, voice actress. For sure. Man, I, I love the Corbin song. The video, it's also, it's just an amazing record. He's so talented. How was that like working with him? Because I, I know you knew about him like before, before when he was spooky black, like you were tapped black. in with him. In the face in the sun. <laughs> oh, that's my shit. I love that. Talk about talk about Corbin though. Corbin, he's the fucking goat. Um, I was actually with him last night. We kick it sometimes and we we chill and whatever. But um, yeah, that's my boy. But obviously, like I said, I was like a big fan when he was like spooky black. So when he had come to the studio. Um, <laughs> with one of G Money's homies because G Money's homie was like managing him and he pulled up and I was like a little fanned out. I was like, well, and <laughs> he was like super quiet and he didn't really say anything. And I was like, shit, uh, I got to play you some music that I've been working on. And he's like, okay. He was just like, did he know you were an artist at the like, time? Oh, shit. He, I don't think, no, I don't think he knew who I was. No. Oh, facts. So was just off the I, strength. I really, when I met him, I, I only had like, I think we'll let it go out. Maybe. And he maybe. had a flip I phone. Have, I, yeah, I, I might have had d route. I don't know. But anyway, so I was I didn't really have much out. And like, I played. No, I I, I did have d route. I think, no, I didn't have. No, d wasn't out. It was just let it go. <laughs> I played him Tell Me Why. That was the first song I played. And afterwards, like, he just looks at me and I'm like, holy shit, I hope he doesn't like hate this. And he like looks at me he's like, wow i didn't know that you had that in you and i was <laughs> and i was like oh i was like thanks man and then as then i just remember like saying yeah bro uh shit if you're down we gotta make some shit because i know like he doesn't work with anybody like mm-hmm. he like i've heard some story I, i'm yet to ask him but i've heard some stories that he's turned down some crazy big features and shit like that so i know mm-hmm. i know he doesn't work with anybody Apart from like people that he really fucks with, and I was like, "Well, I'll lift you down to make some music one day." And he was just like, he just like looked at me, he's like, 
yes, we're going to link up. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, all right, cool. I didn't really know what that meant. But then one day I was at the studio with Bobby Raps. He came through. I mean, we 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 had like seen each other out somewhere. Like I remember I saw him at the Cheesecake Factory randomly one day and I was like, oh, what up? Like, da, da, da. We never really had a real proper conversation because obviously we just like met and whatever. So yeah, when he came to um, the studio with me and Bobby Raps, he pulled up, Bobby Raps pulled up a beat and I was like, I just asked him like, shit, you want to make some shit to this? And, and it was like, not yeah. fair. Yeah, yeah. He was I, like, yeah. Okay. yeah I, had, I had no idea that his music even sounded like that. Like, he's got a crazy yeah, voice. Well, like. You know what's crazy? Like, he, um, when the beat was just playing on loop on the speakers, he was like, he was like, yeah, um, I think I'm going to come in. Like, I can't come unless you kiss me. <laughs> and then, and me and like everybody else. He said it like that or he was like saying it? Yeah, he's like, but he was like, he was like, uh, I can't come unless you kiss me. Uh, like, he was saying it like on some, I thought he was joking. Like, I literally yeah. thought like, like, I was like, there's no way he's going to say it. And like, everyone was just like in the room, like, ah, uh, like, and he like went off. out of the room and then he like came back in and he put on the headphones and he actually said it. And I was like, this guy is a legend. <laughs> and it sounded so hard. That's like some bass guy. And it sounds so yeah, on, fucking hard. Yeah. And do you know what he said to me last night? He he goes to me. Um, he goes to me. Oh, how do you think the the video turned out? I go, yeah, the video turned out sick. He goes, yeah. He goes, I think so too. I love it. He goes, but my uh my 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 parents didn't like it. Really. And I said, I said, I said, why is that? And he goes. Well, because they thought it was a little demonic, and because I also said I can't come unless you kiss me. <laughs> His parents, they heard the I was like, I was like, wow, yeah. I was like, um, but yeah, so fuck yeah. Shout out to Corbin. I, again, we talked about this last time, but for the fans out there that don't know, we, I remember we were talking about kind of you and your mom, or your mom having a strong influence kind of on your um, early music taste, like listening to Wayne, Lauryn Hill, and the story about um, what was it? You guys kind of you wanted to like sign sign the young money at one point, so she helped you kind of navigate that, or how did that go? Well, yeah, I mean, it was like I was living in like the countryside at this point um, when I moved out to the country because I was living there for like four years. I was just like rapping on my mom's fucking like phone and shit over YouTube beats. I just grabbed the phone and start rapping and like. <laughs> Put him on fucking Facebook and shit. Wow, what a fucking time that was. Facebook. What a time. The Facebook era. I just remember, like, you know, I obviously my mom had always played Wayne and shit. After that, you know, I was like, oh shit, I like this. So I'd go and do my own, like, research and shit and look like. And I just, like, wanted to be signed to Young Money because I was like, these guys are, like, the coolest people ever. Yeah, Wayne was like, <laughs> Wayne was like God level back then. Like, shit. Boy, yeah, I so I was like, I remember, like, uh, telling my mom like oh i want to fucking get signed to young money like mama i want to do this can, like how can we like do this and whatever and i remember like she would like stay up me and her would stay up late night like in her in her room like just looking up on the internet like trying to find <laughs> the number for like young money records and like we just scroll pages and pages and like I mean, trying to find like numbers so far yeah, it's fucking sick. We just try and fuck. We scroll forever and just try and find shit. A lot of parents like, if their kid comes to them and is like, "I want to be a rapper and shit," mm -hmm. I feel like they're like probably not the most supportive about that because it's like it's one of the hardest jobs in the world. Yeah, and there's so many kids in the world who want to be a rapper and like think about how many people actually make it yeah exactly <laughs> you know what i'm saying so like but my mom always like was just gave me the freedom to be creative and and you know no matter if we were up or if we had fucking nothing like she would just she would always just tell me like be creative and she was never like she was never too pressed about me like not liking school and shit like that like she 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 had always understood like that i was a little different so <laughs> Which is really special because uh, not yeah. like, in this industry, I feel like a lot, a lot of kids don't really get accepted for when they're like, hey, I want to become a rapper. I want to make a clothing Especially line. first starting off, like we were just talking about yesterday, like a lot, like it's for a lot of parents, it's about like seeing the results of it before they like fully latch on. But I think that your story is so dope because, I mean, like you said, just an example of like, like, oh, yeah, it's not, like, impossible. Like, let's look up how to do, you know, let's look up how to get signed to Young Money, you know, and just like, sitting right there with you yeah. doing it, you know? 
I, like my whole life, I just always felt like nothing was impossible. And I feel like that's uh, because of the way that my mom raised me. Like, you know, if you, if you want something, then you got to go out and get it. You can't just like wait and like think it's going to happen or like wait and just facts. But it happens. You got to really go out and just, and I don't know. That's what I, I that's why I feel like, I don't know. Cause I feel like that's the thing that limits a lot of people is like them thinking that something is out of reach or it's impossible so they don't even try exactly you know what I'm saying? it's so like, overwhelming like yeah like i feel like when you like you would be surprised how much you can get done or how much you can achieve when you just fucking try mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah literally and have a good good team in your corner too you know yeah. that, that's a big thing no 100 percent. yeah people tell sure, you you so can well. instead of you can't you know that's what you'd always you should always look for if you don't even have that a person to look up to kids out there Listen to someone like Leroy, you know? He did it, you could do it too. I I really respect those words, Leroy. Yeah. I remember when that picture had came up on your Instagram and I like I was mind blown, but like talk about Drake's music, his flow, what it did for you as an artist. Uh Drake Drake and Kanye are my two biggest musical hey. inspirations and shit. So it's any if there's anybody that I look to as like a like a like a role model is is definitely Drake because, you know, Obviously, I'm trying to I'm trying to do again what Drake did for his country. I'm trying to do that for my country. So yes, yeah, so even past uh, musically, just like being like yeah. the ambassador. Yeah, hundred percent, and just being like just being that guy. That for guy, his, straight you know. up. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. I'm trying to I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to be that, and uh, I feel like the reason why I love Drake's music is because like I mean okay like for example right now I'm listening to a lot of his like you know the the shit I mean that he put on like care package shit the stuff that was already oh, out yeah, the Lucy's yeah listen to a lot of that shit and listen to a lot of take care right now like at the stage I'm at right now because that's a great like, Drake bag to be in he's talking about a lot of shit in that album that and it well not just that but in those songs that I feel like I'm going through right now as like a kid from another country who's coming to America who's like I don't know. There's just a whole lot of there's a whole lot of shit that he says in there that I just feel so fucking. I don't know. I just feel it. That's <laughs> yeah. the best part of music. Um, well, I mean, that, that's the that best that part of Drake like, to me. That I feel like maybe a lot of other people like feel it, but like I I don't know. I always feel like I feel like no one can feel some of those lyrics like I feel them because it feels <laughs> like that song was written for me. Exactly. Like, so. Yeah. And especially some of the deep cuts, like you know yeah. the fire and desire, teenage fever. <laughs> Jaded, you know what I'm saying? I'm the deep about, ones. I'm talking about you get that the, same time. Oh, girl, I got somebody new. I said, damn, really? Hey, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Rosemary, oh, even oh, the silly. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he's, facts. The care package shit, crazy. Crazy. What did yeah, you think yeah, of the new video, the pop star video? It was crazy. Crazy. I thought that video was amazing. But I you know, like, you got. You guys kind of ask me shit like that because I'm fucking biased. I think everything Drake does is amazing. So I mean, I can agree with you, and I'm not biased that that shit was amazing. The no, fact that yeah. he got Bieber to do that like is insane. Yeah. And it's just like talk about the ultimate flex, you know what I'm saying? I mean, coming off the Dirk video too, like the <laughs> he's the whole Nike headquarters for your video set and then come back with Justin Bieber playing you in your next video. <laughs> that's some that's some Drake shit right there, yeah. you know. That's something only Drake could do. Yeah, super legendary. Amazing. Um so hey, I, we got to I think we got to wrap this up soon, but I've been staring at this all all interview and they'll probably be out by the time this interview. Ooh, yeah, that's it. I need that Motherfuckers need to send me that right now. I think your pack is like touching down ASAP. Hopefully. A case of them. So we got the Kid Laura right. Lemonade. You know what I mean? For the anniversary. For real. Something special. Your own oh. beverage. Congrats. Crazy. Right. Congrats. Just wanted to for officially for the first time. Boom. I think we got to wrap it up on that note, but man, we I can't say it enough. Thank you for being a great sport and coming back. Um, Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you. Yeah, no, it, it's been a pleasure, and um, just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> Fuck love. Out now. Anything else you want to say to the people before we get out of here? Stay blessed. Stay safe. I love you guys, and I can't wait for October. I can't wait for you guys to see what's going on, and... Uh, Australia takeover, man. Nothing, nothing more, nothing less.
Nothing more, nothing less. You heard it here first. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching. This is Car and Conversations. Like, subscribe, comment. We'll be back for the next one. Peace.